making a desperate plea to end the violence. The Albany County District Attorney holding a news conference today formally asking Governor Kathy Hochul to call the legislature back to Albany for a special session. He says lawmakers can't wait until January to revisit laws which he says are causing teens and repeat offenders to get away with crime. They are desperate at this point in time. We're desperate. Albany County District Attorney David Soares has been vocal in his support of New York City Mayor Eric Adams this week. Today, he doubled down. Today, I'm formally asking that the governor uh, ask the, the legislature back to address these public safety policies that are contributing to the increase in violence uh, in our communities. Soares said his main concern is the changes made through New York's Raise the Age Law in 2017. What we have are uh, violent crimes that are being committed by 16 and 17 year olds with absolutely no ability to hold 16 and 17 year olds accountable. Soares said he wants lawmakers to make exceptions to the family court law so that a teen who commits a violent crime can be treated as an adult. He also wants the legislature to define extraordinary circumstances when this can happen and to create an appeal process for youth. He also wants more power for judges. Some stores, like a shop right or a price chopper, they are experiencing over $10,000 in thefts just in meats, right? And when those individuals are apprehended, they're given an appearance ticket. Mayor Adams was the first New York politician to publicly ask the governor for a special session this week, asking lawmakers to fix criminal justice laws that were radically reformed in 2020 and that have been tweaked multiple times since. Thursday, Governor Kathy Hochul said she didn't feel lawmakers were ready to reconvene, blaming the media and Republicans for making the story about bail reform when she says there is more than one issue at hand. We never said that the cause of crime in the state is because of bail reform. That is too simplistic. That is a political slogan. This is not a political issue. It is a public safety issue. Soros praised changes the legislature made at the end of session, but called Governor Hochul irresponsible for failing to address outstanding issues. He says can't wait until January. We're deflecting blame now. But now what we're asking is the community to continue to tolerate this behavior. Soros said the raise the age issue is causing teens to carry weapons just to protect themselves, something he says he's never seen before. He also called out the governor for blaming judges for not implementing the laws the right way. He says the laws themselves are to blame. We begin tonight with the latest in the staffing crisis crippling the Syracuse Police Department, a situation we've been tracking for months, and that situation is not getting any better. There are more than 40 vacancies to fill the department. Here's investigative reporter Mary Keeler on how this could impact your safety. Thousands of hours of overtime and calls to respond to are keeping Syracuse police busy. Over the last several months, our reporting uncovered staffing troubles brought on by retirements and challenges filling the positions. Eight specific details lost due to a dwindling roster over the last five years. We do a very good job getting to priority ones, the shootings, the things in progress. We don't do quite as good when, with the priority twos or clearly with the priority threes, which sometimes wait hours and hours and hours before we get there. Loud music, um, loitering, things like that. We don't do very good at that. Syracuse Police Chief Joe Cecil says at a shift change, there could be anywhere from 5 to 30 calls left over from the previous shift. In May, our team found through a Freedom of Information request that at least seven officers worked over 1,000 hours of overtime in 2021, one making $107,000 in overtime alone. Assuming he worked 40 hours a week for 50 weeks at base pay, it would mean by our calculations he was working an average of 77 hours a week. Nobody's working 80 hours a week. Uh, we would know that and it wouldn't be safe. Um, but people are working overtime. There's no doubt about it. Um, they're coming in, they're getting, and they're not even just, it's not even voluntary. Sometimes we're ordering them in. That's happening mostly in the Armory Square patrol detail, according to Cecil, but he insists nobody is going out exhausted. We monitor all the time. We make sure officers aren't working too much. That makes it unsafe for the, not only them, but the community. There are only four people in the current academy class, which Cecil says speaks to the challenges the department and others across the country are facing with recruitment. SPD is funded for up to 423 officers by the city. I'm joined this morning by Lieutenant Malinowski with the Syracuse Police Department. Lieutenant Malinowski, thanks for joining me.
Good morning. Happy to be here. And uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in and, and giving us a chance to talk. So thank you. So we reported on a stabbing earlier this week at Destiny USA. Do you have an update on that situation as well as anything you can tell us about how efforts to curb violence at the mall are going? Yeah, so that investigation is, is still active and ongoing. Uh, that was a case where a fight had taken place and then someone got stabbed inside of the store. I'll, I'll tell you, it's frustrating because I will give the mall owners credit. They really have tried to throw everything but the kitchen sink um, at, at this security detail um, by adding more police, um, having more security in the parking garages, and, um, and an external police patrol. Uh, but the reality of the situation is, and it's just unfortunate, but if two people want to come in and have a fight, um, and, and in a store and stab each other, you know, unfortunately, sometimes that's just, it's just not preventable. Um, the only alternative, I guess, would be if we had metal detectors at every entrance. Um, that, that could possibly deter the crime, but it's just frustrating because we really have tried to step up the crime, and the, it, there really has not been anything occurring. They feel, still felt the need to uh, stab each other during a fight. Just, again, shows you this criminal element that we're dealing with. Uh, we've seen it in Armory Square with officers just, you know, feet away that a shooting has taken place um, with, you know, us in plain view. So, again, this is something that we're addressing, but it, it's, it's, it's challenging for us, again, because we're dealing with people that see police and will commit crimes, and they're not afraid to do it. It's definitely a tough thing to combat. And so another thing that we kind of wanted to talk about this morning is there was a post made to social media this week that made the situation appear like a Syracuse police officer was making a young girl do push-ups while at a traffic stop. Would you share the full story about that moment and what's happened since? Yeah, so if anyone didn't see it, you can look on our Facebook page. We posted about it, and you can actually see the picture we're referring to. But this was a case where some gang violence detectives who are very hardworking detectives that get very violent individuals off our street took time away from a traffic stop to have a very positive interaction with a juvenile female. Uh, the problem is, is that one of our more prolific agitators in the community who follows us around all the time uh, took the picture and, and misrepresented what was taking place. Uh, the problem with that is when that happens and the whole story gets spun that we were making her do push-ups and there was something sinister in that, it really just, it, it's wrong and it can be dangerous, uh, especially when, if it went viral. So it was important for us to really tell the community what actually happened. And it was one of the most heartwarming stories that I've been a part of. But we actually went out the next day and gave her some teddy bears, a, a patch, a coin, and bracelets, wristbands, T-shirts, we gave her everything and spoiled her because we didn't want her to feel bad uh, and, and tell the real story. So it's a, it's, a heart, it's a heart story for sure, and I'm proud of the detectives that I work with, and, and I'm happy with what they did. Um, for those who might not know, so basically the story was that she asked to do push-ups, correct? Yes, she wanted to be a police officer, and we were like, we well, got to be strong. She's like, I can do 30 push-ups. Uh, we didn't know if we believed her, but she did. She did 30 push-ups, and, and the detectives are really proud of her. And uh, this is the type of recruitment we're recruiting from 10 years off from now. So the fact that she was able to do that, we, we hope in, in 10 years from now she comes and joins us and helps serve the community. So we're really excited about it. A very strong little girl. Well, finally, the department has a new deputy chief. What do you think that he will add to your department? Yeah, so just a few days ago, we uh, promoted uh, Deputy Chief Mark Russin. Um, personally, I, I know him well. I've been working with him side by side now for several years. He's one of the smartest guys I know, I think, as a city. We're very lucky to have him as a law enforcement in general. Um, he's one of the smartest, most dedicated persons I know. So I think that he's going to really do a great job for us and also represent the Syracuse Police Department very well. So we're excited to see what comes from that. But, yes, new Deputy Chief Mark Russin leading the way. Perfect. Well, Lieutenant Malinowski, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Thank you, as always.